Hi, I'm Jeremy, I'm a writer, and this is my YouTube channel where I make videos about all things imaginary. This week, I'm making another video about my experiences at the Twin Mask LARP in Southern California. For those of you who don't know, who haven't seen my other videos, or haven't heard about Twin Mask before, Twin Mask is a fantasy LARP running in Southern California. It's been going on for eight or nine years, and now it's got a really sizable group of players, about 300 plus players who come to every single game. They run about eight games a year, and people come from uh, all over the neighboring area, Los Angeles, Orange County, some people from Utah and Northern California and Las Vegas, San Diego, uh, all to come and play in this game for a weekend. I started going back in November last year, more than six months ago, which is absolutely crazy how time flies. And I went from being a complete noob, completely new to the world of LARPing uh, and everything that it entailed, to now being not necessarily a veteran, but at least having some experience with it and feeling a lot more comfortable with the experience, understanding what to do, how it works, and really, really enjoying it. Obviously, there is always more to learn, uh, but I've been having so much fun with it and really enjoying also getting to document my experiences a little bit via these recap videos that I've been making where I share some of what I got up to in the game and, uh, you know, hopefully some interesting things that will help you if you're starting out and considering joining this LARP or another LARP, or that'll just be fun to uh, hear about for any reason, really. <laughs> One of the coolest things that definitely happened this past game was that I got to finally go camping in character at the game. Twin Mask is what we call a camper LARP, and part of what's really cool about it is that there are actual buildings at the site, the Cronenberg fairground, campground, I, I don't really know the actual term uh, for the place, but the site that we use has actual physical buildings because it's a permanent renaissance fairground. Uh, that has a rent fair there and also rents out the site to other LARPs and events. Because of that, when you're there in the game and being immersed in the world, you have an actual physical setting around you that's supporting the immersiveness. I know that a lot of other LARPs are just in parks or only have tents, and people can do a really incredible job with the decor, but having physical buildings adds a whole other level, I feel, to this experience, and it's something I'm really grateful that I get to experience in this LARP. Now, not everybody goes and stays in those buildings. The buildings are privately owned, so people either rent them from the owners if they have individual relationships with them, or uh, work together with friends of theirs to rent the buildings for a weekend at a time so they have them during the game. Everybody else either commutes in for a day or each day if they don't live that far, spends time car camping, which is mainly what I've been doing, uh, turning the back of my car into a full on little tent for me to be in and sleeping in the parking lot, or going in the out of character camping area, which is not an out of character area in that you still have to be in character while you're there, but the tents are allowed to not fit the aesthetic of the setting. They can look like modern tents and people kind of just accept that in this area, your tents do not look setting appropriate. That is what most people seem to do at the game. And that leaves the last option, which is in character camping, where you're either staying in one of those rented buildings, uh, which in there, it doesn't really matter because from the outside, it all looks great. And it doesn't matter if you only have your normal tent gear set up inside uh, or, you know, just a normal bed that doesn't really look setting appropriate. Or you set up your own tent and go through the effort, bring the things that you need to make it look appropriate to this fantasy world that we're all playing in. I've been pretty intimidated by that just because um, I'm not a very experienced camper and it seems like a lot to put together. But fortunately, I had a friend of mine at game who does a lot of this stuff, who he and his wife do a lot of reenactments and have a lot of experience with LARPing, and they were setting up an in-character camp this time, and he invited me to join him for it. We'd been talking about it for a while, uh, and obviously I, I said yes. I just thought it would be so cool to have this new experience and to try it out. When I was leaving the morning of the LARP and getting to the camp that he had set up, I really did not do anything. Uh, I filmed some videos that way, could document it in the moment and show you what it was like. So I'm at game now, pretty much all set up. I'm camping with a friend who's got all the gear already from Civil War reenactment stuff, and he's just letting me tag along and join the camp so I don't have to set up too much. I'm gonna show you, it looks incredible. Um, this is an awesome in-character campsite where I'll be hanging out. Here you go.
so this is where I'm staying. Got a whole cot set up and slowly gonna get my gear out. A little desk and uh, hopefully protect this entrance so that our camp stays safe. Yeah, a little big tent. So yeah, that's the campsite behind me. I mean, look how crazy it looks. Like cars and road, that's my car back there. And then here, the actual campsite. Way better than the car camping I was doing before. And now I'm in an awesome setup, thanks to Charles. Yeah, so can't wait for this game. It's gonna be awesome. So now after the event, I really loved in character camping. It was every bit the cool experience that I wanted to be because of how awesome the campsite was. We had people who were coming and spending time and hanging out with us in the campsite around that table writing uh, and we had everything we needed. We had water, drinks, coffee, different things that were just great for people to have. And it made it a real center of community, not just a place to rest and sleep at night, but actually a place to have some really fun role play moments throughout the weekend. I think whereas before for me, the game was 90% immersive. Now with this, with in-character camping, it became 99% immersive because I was no longer leaving the game to go back to my car to sleep. Uh, and I wasn't having that moment of getting ready in the morning at my car and coming back into game. Instead, I was falling asleep and waking up in game right away from the beginning in character, even as I was getting dressed in my costume. Um, and it, you know, it, it did away with that remaining separation, uh, which was intense, but I didn't mind. It, it was just that, you know, last little bit of, uh, you know, immersiveness, right? I didn't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't miss having those out of character breathers because I still got some of that in the NPC shifts that I did when I was waiting to go out as an NPC. Instead, I just really enjoyed getting to be in the center of the action uh, in this inter character camping area and having a, a real physical kind of home base to go back to that I, I really enjoyed. And they, they did such a good job setting it up. It looked incredible. So I just felt really lucky to get to stay there. Part of what made that in-character camping really cool is that the friend who set all that up, his character and my character, actually do spend a lot of time together and talk a lot together in character anyways. So it almost uh, worked not just from an out-of-character convenience point of view, but also from an in-character role-playing point of view. And my character Caliban got to do a lot of really fun stuff this game. I also got some really great pictures, which all roll uh, of me in character throughout the weekend. So yeah, like I said, I got to do a lot as Caliban this game. Um, the plans that I've been working on with him haven't yet come to a fruition. I'm not officially the Harbor Master. I'm not officially anything, really. I'm still just a guy trading and doing mercantile activities. But because of the way that I approached it this game, in terms of trying to find ways that I could help people through the things that I wanted to do, I got to interact with a lot more characters than I usually do. Uh, and I also got a much better lens into what's going on in each of their worlds. And I really enjoyed getting those windows into other people's experiences, into the things that other people were involved in. Uh, it actually made me really appreciate playing a business type or mercantile characters. I think it's easy to default into what are your own goals for your character when you play that kind of role, but things get much more interesting and exciting when you see how can you help other people, how can you connect people together, and how can you create structures for uh, other people to role play, to create more role play opportunities that are beneficial to the community and not just help you accomplish your goals. Understanding that I think is really key to the game because everyone individually only experiences small portions of everything that's actually going on in the world that we're in. There are so many different plots, both player directed and staff directed, that happen uh, throughout the course of a single weekend, not to mention over multiple games, that you're never gonna see everything. And I think that's really great. And it only gets more true the bigger the game gets. Now the Twin Mask has so many players and so much going on, I and mean, even for the last few months since I joined, uh, you're never really gonna be able to know about everything that's going on. And even if you do work really hard to get as much information as possible, you won't be able to be involved in everything that's going on because there's just too much going on at the same time. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Like I said, I think it's really great because it makes the world of the game feel much bigger and it allows for 
uh, everyone to have a kind of unique experience. And for me, as a character that was running around and trying to connect people and do these mercantile dealings and figure out what people were working on and what they needed, uh, it just allowed me to really appreciate the scale and scope of the game and hear about what everyone's up to and all the stuff that they're dealing with in World. That's really what I enjoyed most about my time at the April game. And the way that I got the most out of that wasn't through playing Caliban, even though I really enjoyed the direction that he's heading and the stuff that he's getting to work on now. It was actually through the alt that I brought in, the new character that I brought in to play, and the NPC shifts that I, uh, well, the shift, I, I kind of did an extended longer NPC shift, uh, that I got to have that game. That NPC shift was a lot of fun. Doing that and stepping more out of my character, right? Stepping into an alt, into a different character with different desires, different personality, uh, different skill set, and playing these NPCs in which I played multiple different characters with all of those different traits and characteristics allowed me to see a much bigger part of the game. And I think that's what I've slowly coming to enjoy more of, being a part of other people's stories and obviously doing and pushing towards things of my own as well, but also being focused on how can I help develop and expand upon other people's stories. Jesus Christ. Crazy. Oh God, you can help me. You guys can't see it. It's right there, I promise. The alt that I brought in, uh, I want to talk about. In Twin Mask, you're allowed, I think, to play two alts per game, from, from what I understood. Um, and I can't imagine playing any more, honestly, because even dividing your time between two characters is a lot and very difficult. And I spent a lot of time figuring out how best to play an alt, how best to bring an alt into game that I would enjoy playing and that wouldn't take away from my enjoyment of Caliban. And so the character I ended up making was a uh, kind of very aggressive, very confrontational barbarian shaman. He's a much darker character than Caliban. He's not as nice or friendly, I guess amicable as Caliban. Um, and I made him specifically to be a character that I could play uh, at nights when I mainly enjoy playing Caliban during the day because he tends to do a lot of mercantile dealings and that's when most people are running around doing that sort of thing. At night is when the bigger combat mods, the bigger combat encounters tend to happen. And at that point, people are more just uh, looking out for themselves and, and trying to survive rather than trying to trade and, and do those other uh, more what pacifist style dealings, non-combat dealings. Oh no, it's starting to rain. <laughs> All right, we gotta keep going. <laughs> Bringing this alt in, my Barbarian Shaman, uh, we'll call him Wild Shadow, because that's one of the names I've been using for him, uh, was really difficult and really interesting. He's a very different character from Caliban, so I knew I would also have a hard time playing that character and getting into that role while I was playing a different one. And in addition to that, I didn't have the costume fully done or finished. It wasn't quite to where I wanted. I didn't want to invest too much into it. And it still cost me a decent amount that I don't want to share to put together what I had to put together for him. Um, and I knew that he'd be difficult to play because he would rub people the wrong way, because he would be aggressive and not necessarily always as kind. And I was screaming from as soon as game started when I played this character. Uh, that did happen. I, I had to go and make sure to check in with the people that I uh, sort of verbally attacked or yelled at. I tried not to be personal about the way that I attacked people, but I had to go in and check in with the people that I was really angry at uh, so that they knew that, hey, that, you know, there wasn't anything really going on and, and hope that I didn't really rub them the wrong way. And since he was a new character, I didn't really check in before the game. I didn't know how to really approach that. Um, so I just made sure to do it afterwards throughout the course of the weekend and make sure that he wasn't too uh, <laughs> feisty and, and upsetting anybody out of character in real life. I was also surprised by difficulties I had actually getting into the world of the game again. In bringing a new character, the character knows nobody and I had made uh, bonds with other characters beforehand that we were connected to in our backstories, but I didn't actually meet those characters this game. So it didn't really come to anything, which meant I was kind of floating on my own. And because I knew the game better, I was able to know a little bit of, you know, who I might seek out or who I might talk to, but I was role playing, not really knowing any of that. And I still had to role play getting to know people and going through that process. And it meant that after the first hour, which I thought was really good, and I was kind of writing off the momentum of just coming into the game, I had a really big awkward stretch of a good two hours where I didn't really know 
who to talk to. Nobody was really engaging with me because they didn't know me. And I was trying and pushing, but everyone had their own stuff going on. And I was still brand new and role playing into trying to just figure out what was happening. Fortunately, I kind of uh, bared down and just carried on, which I think is so important in a LARP, especially when you're coming in new. That first night at Twin Mask, the Friday night, can be really difficult for a new player just because you don't know anything about the game, the world, the characters. You might be overwhelmed about playing at a LARP, but bearing through and not letting you get, not letting yourself get discouraged is so important because by the end of that Friday night with my new character and by Saturday morning when I first played Caliban, that feeling had kind of dissipated and gone and I was finally sinking my teeth into it and had found people that I connected with in character and that I knew I could see myself continuing to play with in the future. Uh, during the awkward stretch, I thought that maybe I wouldn't bring this character back for a while because I just wasn't really finding a stride with him. But because I ended up finding a good group to hang out with, it made me excited to see where his relationships and where his character growth goes in the future and to see how he can, uh, like I was saying, play a part in their stories, support what they're doing, not just accomplish his own ends. I, I found the NPCing to be very similar, but because the NPCing has less pressure on it or has less um, uh, a weight on it, it's easier, I think, to just really play a character that's that uh, doesn't need to be as fleshed out or doesn't need to be as important to you. And so you're freer to do crazier things that you might not want to do with a character that you carry from game to game. Uh, it is a good way to learn a bit about what it's like alting and to get to see different parts of the game, but it still has its differences too. It's like a step towards, I think, learning to manage alts, learning to manage multiple big characters. Uh, there are obviously staff members at the game who play multiple significant NPCs in the world of the game, and I imagine that that, you know, gets a lot easier to do when you have significant experience NPCing multiple minor characters and, and juggling simplified character traits uh, throughout a weekend as opposed to stepping into these really big shoes time and time again in completely different roles, completely different personalities, uh, different alliances and allegiances. I can definitely see that being overwhelming. Um, and this was about my limit. I think doing my NPC shift, having Caliban as my main character and this character as an alt that I get to play at night, at least on Friday, uh, is is a good balance for me to not get too overwhelmed with the game, but to get to enjoy seeing very different parts of the game throughout the weekend. This past game during my NPC shift, um, I did some more combat, but I also had the most fun as usual role-playing specific NPCs. One, an NPC I got to bring back from the game before, uh, which you can hear my story about him in the previous recap I did it back in March. Um, playing him was super fun. I got to reconnect with the players that I had connected with at him and sink some more roots in the community as this NPC. He's, uh, you know, I, I think it's, <laughs> he's not a really important NPC. Like he's not a very important political figure or military figure or anything like that. Uh, but he is fun to play and it's fun to see him develop relationships with other characters and now have players who know this NPC um, and have some sort of relationship with him. I think that's really cool. I also got to play this somewhat theatrical, uh, socially, not awkward, but but kind of uh, a bull-headed NPC named Bartholomew, who was this very fancy, uh, arcanic cultist, like a magic cultist, who is going around talking about magical theory and engaging with people on magical lessons and teaching people magic. And that was really, really fun because again, I just got to support characters on what they wanted to do. Uh, you know, they wanted to deepen their knowledge of magic and things like that. And so I got to teach them and I didn't really know a ton about the magical system. So it was a lot of me uh, BSing and, and making things up uh, as I went along and trying to engage with their characters based on how they related to the magic rather than feed them some arbitrary explanation of what magic could be. I don't want to give too much info away on him because I do hope that he'll come back. And if you come to play or if you already play, maybe you will meet him. Uh, but he is super fun and I highly recommend NPCing to anyone who's interested in games. I know at Twin Mask, if you come an NPC for the weekend, it's free. Obviously, your first game is free too. 
Uh, but NPCing is a really great way to be a part of the community, get to know the game, and I think players super appreciate it. I know I appreciate it, um, but it's also just a ton of fun, right? It's not just the service. It's something that you can do and have a really good time doing um, that's, that's separate to playing a player character and also just doesn't cost as much because you don't pay the event fee, which is nice and can be good if, if you can't afford it. Because I'm learning quickly that uh, LARPing is, is not a cheap hobby. It can be, but when you get super into it, you want to invest more into it. And so it, it's very hard to keep it as a cheap hobby. It just tends to spiral out of control, which uh, has been the case for me and is something I'm trying to have a better handle uh, or grip on. <laughs> so that's the story of my April game. Um, I was pretty exhausted by the end of all that, and I you know, was so close to just passing out. In fact, uh, some of the friends that I, I brought new friends to game uh, this time to, for them to try it out and they loved it. Uh, but I had one of those friends drive for a bit on the way back just because I was so tired uh, after a weekend of intensity. I literally just got home from LARP. I just parked my car and I'm so tired. I'm so, so tired, but I had an awesome time. Sleeping in the in character area, like I said, was great, uh, but because there were people being so loud around, it made it harder to get to sleep, and I didn't wear earplugs because because that was dumb. I, I definitely recommend earplugs, having them just in case. Um, and I wanted to do more. I wanted to be more active and be more involved with the game, so I just didn't get as much sleep. And then Sunday, when we woke up and we're getting ready to tear down, right, we had to bring down, break down the whole camp. I ate a really huge meal just because I needed it and wanted it very badly um, and then just was super tired the whole way home and rested for the next couple of days around work because I, I still had a whole bunch of work to do right as soon as I got back. Now we're in kind of a big break. Uh, there's not going to be a next Twin Mask game until the first weekend of July, which is a long time to wait, but hopefully that will give me time to keep working on my costumes, keep making some more plans, make some other kinds of videos in the meantime, and then try to uh, experiment with that and push forward on that. But I, I am really excited to eventually get back to game. I'm surprised still just how into it I've gotten. Uh, now when I'm looking ahead and I'm making some travel plans for later this year, I'm looking at the Twin Mask dates to try and avoid missing them if I don't have to. Uh, I, I've been really, really having fun with the game, so I don't want to miss one unless I really need to. But that's that's my April recap. That's my April game recap. Um, like I said, I've been enjoying going to the game and I've been enjoying making these videos. There were a whole bunch of people at game who said the videos I made helped or were useful to them or that they watched it and enjoyed them. Uh, and I really appreciate that. That uh, really made my weekend hearing that people dug the videos that I made and, and, and that the effort that goes into these, what, what little effort goes into these uh, of just slapping them together at least and then taking the time to sit down and record uh, is not wasted and is enjoyed. Um, hopefully more of you will continue coming to game and I will see you there in character, out of character. Don't be a friend to come. Don't be a friend. Don't be a friend. Don't be afraid to come up and say hi and say what's up. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and I'd love for you to join Twin Mask. It's so much fun. If you're just discovering these videos, I make new videos about nerdy imaginary subjects every Friday. So subscribe, say what's up in the comments and I'll see you next week.